Welcome back. We're here looking at the market. So this is going to be my uh, forecast for March 23rd, 2022. If you like support channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner. Hit the like button and the bell button to see our newest videos. And uh, you're welcome to join us over at Patreon. So we'll start by looking at the VIX because there has been a major turnaround in the VIX uh, uh, recently. We hit... Uh, basically a high for if you go out here we have been trading within this range of roughly uh, 36 uh, all the way down to roughly 15 so people if you don't know what the VIX is uh, this is basically the volatility in the market and some also call it the fear index and usually when this uh, spikes uh, the market goes down and when it basically falls the market goes up um, especially that is true for for stocks and also for the indices you can see what basically happened here uh, when we had the coronavirus back in 2020 in march 2020 when when uh, the market fell uh, significantly in just a matter of uh, four weeks then it fell again um, then we had occasional uh, uh, spikes in the, the vix and recently we had this uh, a fairly big spike mainly due to the fact that people were uh, afraid of um, inflation of uh, interest rates hikes and also due to the war in in ukraine so there were a lot of things that made this a spike but since then this has been falling off a cliff that's probably the 50 moving average. Average. average it's heading towards the 200 moving average and it's basically at the bottom of uh, the bullish bands uh, as well so we may see a minor rally up towards the 50 moving gauge probably you'll get rejected there and head towards the 200 moving gauge so we may see the vix continue to fall until we hit the 200 moving gauge um, as it has been um, we can also see the vix basically going back towards these very low levels of 15 but that is probably not going to happen we are most likely going to see the vix trending upwards mainly due to the fact that the um, uncertainty in the world economy is uh, fairly big at the moment as uh, inflation is just continuing uh, hammering the world economy the world economy in general is not doing very well and of course we have interest rate hikes and also the war in uh, ukraine if you look at the um, technical indicators for for the VIX, you can see the MACD is very bearish. You can see the stochastic is also bearish, and the RSI is also bearish. We're approaching oversold conditions in the RSI, so uh, rallies we will see them, but they have been sold into quite significantly recently. So we can also go and look at the energy market. We can see, for example, this is a WTI, and so we had this a major rally here when the war started. Uh, went all the way up towards $130. It hasn't been this high uh, since back in 2008 when it basically got to roughly $140 a barrel. It fell off a cliff all the way down to 93 and now we have continued rally up towards we were above $110 and now we're trading at $108. So this is a market that is going to continue um, increasing uh, we'll probably not see this amount of volatility this was mainly due to the fact to the war starting and that just, just made, a, made a massive shock if european uh, if the european union um it goes through with its plan to basically um not allowing uh, Russian oil to be sold in the european markets then we will see this market continue increasing but yet again this got way ahead of itself and it fell down. We are seeing similar rallies here that most likely will bounce off the middle of the bullish band at 104 or the 50 moving average of the 95. If you look at technical indicators, we can see that there's not a lot of volume at this current stage. There's a little bit of buying, but not the same volume that we saw over here when there was a lot of buying and a lot of selling when this fell. MACD is uh, bearish at this point, stochastic has become bearish, and so is the RSI. So this may continue towards 905, bringing that could open the door to 95, which is the, the 50 moving average. 
but in general this market will continue increasing as long as the war is ongoing if you look at natural gas which is also a market that has been really volatile and uh, for this time of year uh, extremely high but that's perhaps also due to the fact that there is a uh, energy crisis in the world and the uncertainty in this market is very high so this is the u.s market not the european market uh, and at this time of year just look at uh, last year we were basically down here at trading at two on oh, back in 20 we we're trading at you know, 1.5 and now we're trading at five dollars and that is very very high we are in a uptrend and we are bouncing off the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average so getting close to those uh, we are basically bouncing but it is very overstretched at this current stage we're trading at 5.15 MACD is bullish, Stochastic is bullish, and so is RSI. But uh, last time, or mainly every time we go past the bull upper part of the bullish band or the lower part, this tends to um, shoot the other way. So here, shoots the other way, same goes for here, rallies and then goes back. And now we should expect this to this pull back, back, back to at least the middle of the bullish band, 4.7, breaking that, then do the 50 moving average at the 4.5. But as we look at this, even though we're at this time of year, it is still in an uptrend. If the 200 moving average basically breaks, then we could see this market uh, drop. But that is also roughly the lowest part of this around 3.5. So let's look at the indices because they have been absolutely on fire. And this um, probably mainly due to the fact that, that the VIX is... Um, is falling uh, there is not that much fear in the market as it was when we saw the market basically uh, fall significantly down to uh, 13,000 um, now we're trading at 14,708 we are above way above the 50 moving average and have closed 200 moving average is up here at the 15,150 and that should be a massive barrier breaking above that then this market will mostly go to the all-time highs if you look at the MACD, we can see that it is bullish, stochastic is bullish, and the RSI is bullish as well. So pullbacks from here will most likely get support from the 50 moving average roughly down at 14,300. So if you look at the S&P 500, very similar here, it's even more bullish because it has broken above the uh, 200 moving average. However, these are the candlesticks that we have been uh, have to look at there. Uh, if we break above these candlesticks, then there is nothing that is prevents this market from uh, going to the all-time highs. Uh, it is getting fairly overstretched. We're at the top of the bullish band, and um, and we are yes, we're basically at the top of the bullish band. Usually that means that we'll pull back, but at this point, it's, uh, 50 moving average around four four thousand four hundred as probably where we'll see this bounce to the upside if we were to break from here then the then the middle of the bullish band 14 four thousand three hundred and then the very bottom here at four thousand one hundred and and thirty if you look at the technical indicator we technical indicators we can see the macd is bullish stochastic is bullish and so is the rsi and still there's quite a lot of room to the upside so if you look at the Dow Jones, very similar here. It fell yesterday, mainly due to a Boeing pulling back significantly after their tragic crash tra 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 in China. Um, but today it turned around and uh, basically took out the highs here and is heading towards the 200 moving average. Technical indicators are all very bullish, a lot of room to the upside, but it's getting fairly overstretched in the bullish band. So if we manage to get a close above the 200 moving average, then it's a very good sign that this market will go significantly higher. However, it did do the same thing only a few weeks ago and then just got absolutely trashed. So um, anything can happen today. There are so many things that basically can um, turn both the NASDAQ, the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones um, completely around whether or not whether that is interest rates inflation um, economic downturn or the war in in uh, in ukraine uh, 
all of those can have a major effect and just completely turn this around, especially when it get is it gets very overstretched. So if we look at the European market, this is the DAX. We can see the DAX also hovering around 14,470 at this current stage. Um, did fall yesterday and today it has rallied. Um, so DAX just fell off a cliff, especially the European market has is not very strong at this point. Uh, the world, European economy is expected to pull back, uh, but this has been a mass, massive rally. But there's a lot of work to be done here. If we manage to break about, we need to basically manage to break about the 50 and the 200 in order to go back towards these highs of roughly 16,000, 16,500. If you look at the MACD, we can see that it is bullish, stochastic is bullish, and the RSI is bullish, and there's a lot of room to the upside in the RSI. I just don't see this getting above these moving average without seeing probably a testing of this bottom or a pullback before going higher. So there's another thing that is basically bothering me, and it's not the VIX, it is this. This is a US 10 year. And and usually this is not a good sign for for stocks. It's not a good sign for indices because people are betting at this current stage that interest rates will increase quite significantly. So they're not as high as they have been uh, in the past. You can just look back at the 2019. We're up at 3.2 and we're only at 2.3 at this current stage. So we're far away from where we were back in the in in 2019. So the federal uh, uh, Jerome Powell, Powell the, the chair, chair of the Federal Reserve, Reserve, Reserve in the United States, States basically hinted at uh, uh, interest rates going higher. And you can basically see that in the bond market. And usually there's a negative correlation between the bond market and basically everything that happens here with these stocks, with these indices and so on. So people are betting that, that interest, rates, interest rates will go higher. That means borrowing costs for these companies that will basically uh, go down. So, yes, uh, this could, you basically only need uh, some uh, bad news from uh, from the Federal Reserve or something like that, uh, indicating that will be uh, several rate hikes and probably uh, 0 0.5 rate hikes and not 0 0.25. And this could have significantly effect on these indices, which are fairly overstretched at this point. So, hope you found this helpful. You're all support the channel by subscribing. Hit the like button and the bell button to see our newest videos. And good luck, and thank you very much.